NYU Weinstein Hall. My dorm room is so small, it fits two beds, two desks, and shelves that are on white cinder block walls. My roommate is Tom, captain of the Star Trek Club. <laughs> and I have a massive crush on him. It's so bad, the last few nights, I just watch him sleep with my hand right near his crotch. <laughs> Wishing that I were some gay mutant villain. Fat Nino, able to move his penis with my own telepathic will. <laughs> It's so bad that on the cinder block walls, I've hung the 11 by 17 portraits of Tom and me in suits. In the photos, Tom's parents say that I look like Salminio. Tom, who's Salminio? He's that guy in Rebel Without a Cause who has a crush on James Dean and gets beaten up. Reggie, you're not gay, are you? No. I like pussy. <laughs> Tom has his girlfriend, Elvira. A psych major. Every time Tom and Elvira have sex, Elvira belts something wild and fierce as if a mouse crawled up her leg. <sighs> Uh, Tom, you know what I don't like is you and Elvira coming in at night. You know what? I've got some auditions and I really need to be alone, so uh, why don't you just take it over Elvira's room, okay? Tom says, okay. <laughs> that night it's really hard for me to concentrate on my audition monologue because I'm looking at Tom's laundry bag and I have this urge to go and just sniff out his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Then I hear a knock on the door. It's Maria. Maria is a Filipina musical theater major like me, and we're a big hit at Weinstein Hall. Uh, we play Jesus Christ Superstar, and she's Mary Magdalene. Uh, Reggie, um, you're really great in the piano. Um, thank you, Maria. You could really belt that high D. Maria tells me that uh, her roommate Wanda, who's a film major and nymphomaniac, uh, wants to have sex. So what she does is she writes on the door, Maria, your mother calls. That's Maria's cue to get out. Well, this particular night, Wanda wants to have a, a, an orgy, and so she wrote, Maria, your mother called, I'm serious. <laughs> Everyone in Weinstein Hall kept wondering, what is up with Maria and her mother? <laughs> it was like the new joke all over the dorm. Uh, well, you know, Maria, Tom's with Elvira. So I'll stay in Tom's bed and you can sleep in my bed. So I close the lights, turn off the lights, and I see that there's a moonlit shadow over Maria. And as I'm about to drift off, Maria whispers, let's do it. Let's have sex. <laughs> okay, Maria, I will have sex with you, but first I must take a shower. <laughs> I never had sex with anyone before, but now this is my chance. <laughs> <laughs> it was the longest shower I ever took. <laughs> I took my body shop, coconut soap, my pineapple conditioner, my mango. <laughs> I, I, I smelled like a tropical fruit salad for Maria. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to do. I was offering, uh, as soon as I got out of the shower, I brought the towel over my breast like a vessel virgin. <laughs> offering up myself to Maria, the goddess of heterosexuality and show tunes. <laughs> as soon as I got out of the shower, I looked at the bed and I saw Maria's bra and underwear were on the floor. So she had to be naked. <laughs> I didn't know what to do, so I dropped the towel and I flew on top of her like Peter Pan. <laughs> and she said, ouch. <laughs> and if I looked down, uh, I looked like Tom Cruise from Mission Impossible. And if I looked up, I looked like Ariel the Little Mermaid. <laughs> 
who wish I could be in a heterosexual world. And I kissed her, and she made a noise. I thought, wow, Maria, you've got a range. You could be a high baritone also. And then she flipped me over, and I thought it was like a wrestling thing, so I flipped her like, Andy, get your gun. And that's when the books from the shelves fell on her, and she said, ouch, ouch. I'm like, I am so, so sorry. And she goes, shh. And I decided, I didn't know what to do, so I just go lower, and I get to her breasts, and everyone loves breasts, and my head is between her breasts, and her breasts are like headphones. <laughs> <laughs> and I could hear her heartbeat. This is cool. <laughs> At that moment, I felt like a Robert Frost poem, The Breasts Not Taken. I, <laughs> I should suck in one of the breasts. I didn't know, I went for the left one. <laughs> it was very marsupial. I... I didn't know how long to suck on the nipple. I just thought the skillets would fall from the sky or something. I didn't know what, what to do. So then I go lower and lower. And I noticed that there's some moisture down there, so now I'm having sex with a humidifier. <laughs> I didn't know how to turn it off. I wish there was an instruction manual. And then I get lower and lower, and Marie's going, shh, and she's reaching for my penis, but I have no penis. Basically, if, if you molded my penis, you could fit it on a keychain. <laughs> and I said, I'm sorry, Maria. I can't. And I'm running out of the room, and I am humiliated and embarrassed. And as I'm running out, I could hear Elvira's wailing orgasm. <laughs> but this time, I think she's laughing at me. <laughs> And I'm outside the dorm room and I look at Elvira's window and I can see the shadows of Tom and Elvira moving around. And I go to the payphone and I call Elvira's room. Hi, Elvira. Tom, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. But uh, I don't think my audition is going to go well. And uh, I'm really depressed right now. And I drank a six pack of peach wine coolers and I've got a bottle of Tylenol pills. And I'm going to walk into traffic right now. <laughs> So I'm running up University Place, right on 8th Street towards St. Mark's Place. As I go towards there, I see all of these attractive guys going into Boy Bar. And I walk in, and Lisa Stanfield's all the rage, and it's, <laughs> been around the world and I, I, I can't find my baby. I don't know where he can be. He's my baby. And I am a sexy molecule of Malibu and and I am gyrating, and all the guys are looking at me. I am a man magnet. And I turn around, and I see this guy, and he's walking towards me. <laughs> he's from France. He's visiting here for a short time, and he wants to go to my place. So I take him into my cinder block dorm room. <laughs> Here was my shirt. And I put my hand under his sweatshirt and I feel ribs. And my hand is shaking and he kisses me. Our most perfect palates open as we pull away to catch our breath. And that's what it is like. It is like swimming and diving and breathing for air. It's as if we're a diver free falling and plunging into a sea of pearls. That moment, the door knocks. It's Tom. I giggle under the sheets. Tom, your mom calls. <laughs> I'm serious. 